Hey guys, what's up? So I'm finally back with another wine video. Now I don't know about you, but for me, these last few weeks just have been really rough. My girlfriend says that it's just Virgo season manifesting itself. The tediousness, the detailed orientedness, and just the need for focusing on health, which are textbook traits of the Virgo, just blew up in my face in the last few weeks. Anyway, I sincerely hope that we're done with those rough patches. Crossing my fingers, I have here a sparkling wine bottle just for us to celebrate whatever we've just gone through. Today's sparkling wine is a cava from Spain. So this is branded as Castel Lord, and this is a semi seco cava bottle. So it means that it's slightly sweet. So for those of you who are drinking wine and still like it a little bit sweet, I might just recommend this to you. So in today's video, let's learn more about cava. And the question is, should you be drinking sparkling wine even when there's nothing to celebrate? Let's find out. So first and foremost, what is cava? Essentially, cava is made the same way that champagne is made. Both undergo a second fermentation process. In the second fermentation, when the yeast is put in, the bottle is actually moved by small degrees, by small angles, day by day. That yeast builds up the bubbling sensation that we like. So making cava and champagne is actually a tedious process. That's why I actually chose cava as the wine to represent the Virgo season. I just didn't get around to it in time. For my wine in Zodiac series, if you want to view some of those older videos, you can click on it now. So what's the difference between cava and champagne, you might ask? While many people like to call sparkling wine a champagne, you actually can't call all sparkling wine champagne because the term champagne is exclusive for the sparkling wine that's produced only within Champagne, France. Even though it's made exactly like Champagne, it is in Spanish, and maybe the types of grapes that go into a cava are a little bit different than in Champagne. So for cava, it's usually Charello, Macabello, Parallada. So those are the types of grapes that usually make up cava. So I've been waiting to open this, and let's get it started. In opening cava or Champagne, there is this tab that you can pull on so that you can easily take the top off. So everything's just coming off. Cava, champagne, and a lot of sparkling wine. I have this cork and this metal enclosure. Interesting trivia, they actually don't need to do this anymore. They can just do a seal of a screw cap. But because people like that popping sound, that celebration feel. That's why we're still using these corks. So let's get it open. And open your sparkling wine bottle that's good for your thumb while you're twisting it open. Um, because sometimes this can be flying all over the place. Let's quickly get that out of the way. I feel like I've earned this bubbly. So for sparkling wine, for cava, it's usually nice to put into a flute. So a flute will actually help you retain some of those bubbles. I feel like it's New Year and I'm also going to be putting one in a regular wine glass. Which should you use? Should you use a wine flute or a regular glass? When you use a regular flute, it tends to keep the bubbles there longer. So if you like your drinks fizzy, I would recommend a flute, but if you want to go beyond the fizz, I would recommend using a regular glass such as this. If you want to appreciate the wine in its entirety, it's probably better to use a regular wine glass. So as with cava, it's actually quite yeasty. It's almost like freshly baked bread, brioche, or what's popular in Asia would be coffee buns. If you know the, the coffee buns from Kopi Roti, for me when I drink cava, I'm usually smelling those flavors. Let's go in. That's tasty. I missed a little bit of the fizz. Let's use the flute this time. Okay, that's better. So once you pop it open, you can't really use the cork anymore to put back in. But what I like to do, because I have my handy collection of old corks here, just actually fit in. As you see, when you open a bottle of cava or sparkling wine, you should consume it within the day. Of course, you can only retain the fizz for maybe 
another day or maybe at most tomorrow but the fizz will have really died out already so the question is are sparkling wines really just for celebrations well i guess the popping sound makes it quite fitting for celebrations but in reality i like sparkling wine especially cava for practically any occasion you know we talk about white pairing and red meat and red wine and white meat and white wine and seafood and so on and so forth because of the body that cava has even as a white wine it can really stand and pair with even heavy red meats so for me personally when in doubt when you don't know what to drink, when you don't know what to bring to a party, sparkling wine is a great pick. The sparkling wine, especially cava, whether it be a brunch, a lunch, or a party at night, and sparkling wine and cava are pretty versatile. You can drink in practically any time of day, any occasion, and pairing well with practically any type of food. So today, I'm really recommending this cava from Castellord. So this one, as mentioned, is semi-seco. For those of you who like it minimally sweet, maybe this isn't for you. I'd go for cava that says Brut or Brut Natur, which means that it would have less sugar. But for semi-seco, it does mean semi-sweet. You can get this for as little as 299 pesos or even below $6. So that's probably one of the cheapest sparkling wines that you can get in the country right now from SNR. If you're not a member at SNR, you can use Pickeroo or Metro Mart. I'll share with you links below. Get 250 pesos off your first purchase so that you can avail of this lovely box. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing. Thanks for waiting for this wine video. Let's cheers on this past season and hopefully better ones in the months to come. Cheers, guys.